Hello world, Sarah Matthews here. So as an astrophotographer, the number one question I get asked the most is what my astrophotography rig is. So I thought that I would walk you through my rig component by component and kind of give you an overview of why I chose those uh, pieces of equipment. Um, obviously each rig is going to be different depending on what your goals are for astrophotography. Mine uh, with this one is for deep space astrophotography, so imaging uh, nebulas or nebulae and galaxies. So um, yeah, I hope this video is helpful for any of those who are beginner astrophotographers as well as for those who are kind of more seasoned veterans, just if you're interested in like what my setup is like. And yeah, so. Let's start with the single most important piece of equipment for any deep space astrophotography setup, and that is of course, the lovely mount. So the mount is really important in deep space astrophotography because it not only supports and stabilizes the telescope and the imaging accessories, but because it also tracks the night sky. So it moves the telescope where it needs to go very, very smoothly throughout the entire imaging session while the Earth rotates on its axis. So what I have here is a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro German Equatorial go-to mount. And for those who don't already know this, a German Equatorial mount is preferred for deep space astrophotography, namely because of the amount of axes that it has, um, which makes it something that is useful for tracking a deep space object throughout the night sky as you're imaging it. So with this mount, um, it's been my first German equatorial mount as I have entered into deep space astrophotography. So as a beginner, it was incredibly um, user friendly for me, which made the already challenging hobby that is astrophotography a lot easier. Um, it's been very reliable. And um, I think for the 44 pound payload capacity and the price point that it has, it's perfect. Oh, and what I didn't say earlier because I didn't show you guys when I was setting this up um, that when you set up the tripod legs for any mount make sure they are level before you put the tripod mount on unless you have a pier and if you do have a pier like that's awesome I'm super jealous um, uh, make sure that's level and then put the tripod or put the mount onto the tripod legs and then the EQ6R Pro does have a bubble leveler so make sure that is also level you just want things to be as level as possible it's going to help eliminate a lot of issues uh, down the road um, I'm going to grab the two 11 pound counterweights and I'm going to add them to the mount and we can go over why uh, balance is so important on this, uh, in, on this butte. So right back. <laughs> I have returned with these very, very heavy uh, objects. Um, so I'm just going to put one down because you guys already know that I can lift them up, which is uh, what I wanted to prove. I'm just joking. Um, so yeah. Uh, so we are back. I have added the two counterweights to the mount. Um, I do have kind of like a rough estimation of where they should go because I marked them um, on the um, um, extension pole here for this payload that I have. Um, obviously I will balance it actually correctly once I do add the telescope and the camera and everything else on to get a precise balance. But um, you know, balancing is very important. If you don't already know this, uh, you want to make sure you're not straining your mount's motor by making sure that you are balanced in both declination and right ascension for an equatorial mount. Um, and yeah, so let's add the uh, telescope now. All right, so this is my primary imaging telescope. It is a William Optics Fluorostar 110 uh, triplet refractor F7. It has a focal length of 770 millimeters. Um, so it is perfect for framing up uh, emission nebulae and galaxies. Um, what I do love about the triplet refractor uh, is that there are three lenses and the three lenses inside of the refractor help to eliminate the chromatic aberration that tends to be kind of a common error through uh, just refractors in general. Um, so I've been very impressed with this telescope. It is a little bit older, but it functions great. Um, I do sometimes use a focal reducer uh, just to kind of brighten up um, some targets if that's what I'm wanting to do or to reduce the focal length. But yeah, I do have a uh, different focuser on here. It's a Bayer Planetarium Steel Track focuser that I had installed not too long ago, and it's been working great so far. Yeah, and something that I do love about refractors as well is that if you are uh, comfortable with telephoto lenses, uh, that's kind of like kind of where I started out with, um, making that graduation to a refractor, um, especially a wide field refractor like a Red Cat 51, which I also do have for deep space imaging, it just makes it a lot easier because they are they do function very similarly.
Moving on to my camera and um, my filters or filter wheel. Um, I have my camera, I have a ZWO ASI 2600mm Pro. It is a dedicated astronomy camera that is monochrome, so it shoots in black and white. Um, it is also cold, so you can cool the sensor down, which helps to eliminate noise. Um, so you're going to get more signal to noise that way. Um, and yeah, so the filter wheel that I have here, it's an electronic filter wheel from ZWO as well, the 7 position. Um, I have 7 uh, filters in here. They're all unmounted. Um, I have 4 uh, broadband filters, and then I also have 3 narrow bands. Um, what I do love about narrow band imaging, especially in a Bortle 7 that I live in, is that I'm able to isolate certain, wave, uh, certain band passes of light, um, and uh, that helps to reduce a lot of the if not all of the, the light pollution that would otherwise be very visible. So um, I do attach this uh, using um, the adapters into my focuser here, uh, just like this, very securely. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, cool. The next thing on the docket is how I guide. So um, if you haven't started guiding yet for your long exposure astrophotography images, I highly recommend it. Um, it's a game changer if you're looking to have uh, subs that are over, you know, three to five to ten to twenty minutes long. Um, if you're not guiding, then it's going to be uh, nearly impossible to do that. So what I use for my guide scope is a William Optics 50 millimeter guide scope. Um, then um, I also use a ZWO ASI 290mm mini um, uh, guide camera. I have marked on here um, where I entered into the Rotolock apparatus here at the end of my guide scope. So I would just uh, put it in here up to the line that I drew and lock it in with the Rotolocker. That is how I guide. What I use to control everything is with the ASI Air Pro. Um, my ASI Air Pro not only uh, controls my uh, uh, rig, but it also powers a lot of it, um, as long as I have like a, a way to power this, this, this dude right here. So um, the ASI Air Pro, I just Velcro down here. Um, but essentially what it does is I'm able to polar align, I'm able to focus my telescope, I do have a ZWO electronic focuser that um, I just have not yet installed into my new focuser that I got uh, installed on this telescope, so I'll be doing that, which then I can now control the, the focusing on this. Um, but I do polar align using the ASI Air Pro. I also do um, control my camera, my filter wheel, my guiding, um, and yeah, so it's pretty great. You're probably wondering, for those who are familiar, why my Pro has a antenna on it. It is because I had it modified before the ASI Air Plus came out with its uh, extended Wi-Fi capabilities. I did have it modified by a gentleman in Colorado Springs who did a fantastic job. Alright, so we've gone over basically the entirety of my primary deep space astrophotography rig. Um, hope that this was helpful for, for folks that are either new into deep space astrophotography or for those who already uh, do deep space astrophotography and are just curious about what my rig looks like because it's something that I get asked all the time. Um, please let me know down in the comments uh, what other types of videos you would love to see. Um, and yeah, I just really appreciate all of your support. Um, please like and subscribe if you feel like you can't, if you feel like you're up for it. Um, but until then, I hope you all have clear skies.